make sure it knocks the cow. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Alrighty, I'm trying to find the tag on here for the transmission, but I cracked enough ice that now my back's wet, so that's not ideal. So I should have just done and pulled it out front first. Not worried about uh, not messed around laying in the ice and water. I was gonna tinker on that, but we got some work to go do, right? So, <clears throat> Adam the mass dairyman, you know, Richardson's, called me and said, hey, I'm gonna time out emptying end unit alarms, which on a robot, there's like two things. And the most common one, since American rubber has gone downhill, is uh, the O-ring on the milk pump. So before I even said it, I, he said, yeah, it's bubbling in the receiver jar. So that's going bad, or is bad. So we'll run up there and we will uh, switch that up. But we'll get back to that at a later date. Well, as long as we're driving along here, I figured I'd cover another subject that a lot of people said, get containers and build a roof, do this and that. So finding cheap containers is is like non-existent um i do like the idea of containers because you got lock storage and dry environment my brother has a 40 foot and a 20 foot container but like it's not to find a halfway decent one it's i don't know 2500 three grand for him so you start doing that up you get two containers and granted you got to move them uh, so you got two containers and let's say you got four or five grand into them and then you got to build a roof or put a hoop they got the shorter hoops that go over the roof so you got like 16 foot of storage or clearance in the middle which then you start doing that math and those things are still 12 1500 bucks so you're into a building for probably seven grand um where you can buy a big hoop building for seven grand so just some food for thought on that because a lot of people did say hey why don't you do that whatever i'm doing now i don't see um well, Frank made the comment yesterday, and eventually Frank's going to have the oil pullers out. We'll see. He's having a baby any day now. So we didn't get the oil pullers out this year. But uh, he made the comment that, like, a hoop building, you're, like, five years back, so usually they fall apart after that or whatnot. Like the, And you can put new tarps and whatnot on it. Um, but I said... In five years, I sure hope I'm not working on the same thing. I hope I have a legit shot, like overhead crane, stuff like that. That's the dream. It's a dream right now, but that's the dream. So, yeah, some food for thought because I do read through all the comments. Answering all the comments takes quite a bit. If there's some unique questions, I go through and answer them. But I was wondering if that was Ross, but it was not. Alrighty, we're gonna jump up, go see Adam. It's like 30 minute ride, nothing too crazy, and switch that out. I guess I'll film it, show you guys, because you guys find that side of my job unique, or that side of my life unique, which I agree it is unique. But like, so this morning, I went to work, um, 
and we had a camera cable start acting up on one robot which turns out the gasket that hold is in between it must have been poor quality it goes back to that whole rubber thing so we switched that out I did end up switching the camera out because it had, the baseboard had some corrosion on it. So I've, I've already done that. I came home and I went and I've been messing with my stuff. And I figured I might, I should probably get this done tonight because tomorrow I got a long day. I got a service kit tomorrow as well. Uh, and I still do have that wand for Louis Lipton um, down there for their grain trucks. So probably on my way back through, we'll stop there and drop that off. Well, yeah, some days are planned well, and some days you go with whatever the flow is. So it's four o'clock right now. I'll be I'll be back home by six probably. And then I got office work. I got a lot of office work and stuff. I got to get all my year end stuff done. What are you doing? This is what Yanko does when we go places. He has the spots where he stays. And here, it's usually under the steps. Well, we'll let it melt this cow, then we will go to work. Just a little bit of cleaning solution that came up over the out of cup. A little soap. That's how it's done. So mode, manual close stall. So when she's done, I can do what I need to. We're gonna have to pop these panels apart. You can see right up in the front here how it's gurgling every now and then. So it could be two things. It could be there's a check ball that goes right in here and that's out and it's just pulling enough vacuum. I guess it could be three. That, it could be this, or it's the milk pump seal. We'll start by popping this off and seeing. I have seen these wear out and leak, but I don't think that's it. Once she's out, come on girl. I just press the board, it parks the arm back. Come on girl. <laughs> Clearly, they don't want to be in here, right? <laughs> Kidding. It's people who say robots aren't good for cows. Cows love robots. Come on. <laughs> that's just a little air whip that's going. Come on. Come <laughs> on. Come on. Okay. Never mind, she's not gonna go up. She laughed, but she made a mess. Milk transport. Destination, user. Cow went to the tank, so we'll empty it. Which turns the pump on for another quick second. Now we'll purge it. So now the air valve's purging that. Purge it again. And then from there, we'll do destination, drain. And it's purging because it's changing. That way we don't take a milk, milk bath when we open anything up. So once it changes, then I can purge it again. Which will, as you see, thins up the milk out of the drain. Do one more. And then it drains this way. So we should be pretty good. 
the valve all, valves all open up and it drains out what it needs to be. What we do, we pop this one off and just make sure that chip ball is still in there. Because that's a good telltale sign that why it would be slow to pump. It cavitates the valve or the pump. Okay. It is still there. It looks good. It's sealed up. So we're good there. But we can get off till we're done. So yeah, check ball, check ball on the spring. That keeps it from draining milk out when there's vacuum on. So it shuts milk vacuum off to the receiver when it goes to pump but you can see that's all good so we'll take this pump off That you slip between and just split it apart so it comes apart easy. Do the gasket in there, it gets replaced. Okay, motor. Motor's here. You probably need two hands to get that back apart. Well, you can see there's a little bit of buildup, so it started leaking. Pretty fresh. Gasket, don't need that. Got a snap ring. Cut that apart, new one in that. Washer, spring. And this comes apart. So, you got your friction plate that actually it wears on, but what's inside of it, since we got an old uh, metal gasket, Pull. Take that apart. You got an o ring. That's what actually goes back. So we'll get everything cleaned up and we'll get all the new components in. But yeah, that's what makes it leak. Alrighty, baggy of all the goodies. Keep in mind, we do these in the service kits. But there's a known issue. So we got a gasket, we got new snap ring, O-rings, yeah, we got everything. The metal little discs that go inside of it, I'll show you that. Yeah, that one's still in it, so. Alrighty, back in. I gotta clean that up a little bit better, there we go. Get you up. Your impeller goes through. Slide it all down. Get your spring. That locks in in a particular way. So right there it locks in. And then it also locks in up on the top. Put that back on. You know what I forgot? Lubrication. Oops. Put some lubrication on it. Yeah, make sure it's all. It's all good. Okay. Now we do that again.
new snap ring because you stretch them out every time you use them. Or you lose them. Yeah, that one isn't bad. Good. It wasn't all the way in. I grabbed a hold of it. You guys might remember I bought snap ring pliers a while back. They've come in quite handy. So that's back in. We're good there. New gasket. Inside of here, there's little, uh, like a shim. So there's new ones. Granted, I know this one. It's because the O-ring was bad, so that's why we changed it out. So that would be good. It's still inside. If you don't have it inside, it rubs and things are not good. So it always is helpful to lube up the inside, though, so it slides well. Let's throw it back together. So there's a keyway that it goes in on. Once you get that lined up. Where are we here? It slides right in. And then you just gotta line up your little bolt hole slides. Let's slip this back around. It looks good there. The motor itself locks in on the back. And the bolt holds the front. And get these started. Some people take the whole housing out, but I have learned that the less you disturb this, the better off you are. Because that will start cracking more times you flex it around and whatnot. So, trial bite. Learning by trial. It's not bubbling. At least we solved that issue. And then throw it through a wolf and rinse to make sure it melts the cow. Not even one bubble. Alrighty. Well, we're better there. So let's drain that down. Cause that's water, and do a local rinse. What are you doing? Alrighty, got that figured out. We're good to go. No more bubbling. Should be good, Adam. So, if you haven't, slide on over. Mast Airman, Adam Goodwin, manages everything. So, alrighty, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Little interview, inside view of what I do for a day job again. So, appreciate it. Have a good one.